If you are a fan of softball, you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. From SoftballJunk.com, we're bringing you more softball than anyone on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello, I'm your host Gary Leland and this is the Fast Pitch TV show. Make sure and take a look at all my videos and blogs at fastpitch.tv. Now this week I have an interview with former University of Oklahoma pitching great Kalani Ricketts. But before that starts, please watch this short video about my softball magazine which you can find at fastpitchmagazine.com. Oops, sorry, I was reading this month's issue of the Fast Pitch Magazine. What? You're not familiar with the Fast Pitch Magazine? Watch this, you are going to love it. Looks great, right? Want to find more about the number one coaching tool on the internet? Go to fastpitchmagazine.com today. Thanks, Kaylani, for coming on to the show. I really appreciate it. And I've got to say, I was at the World Series the whole time this summer, and I was never as impressed, and I'm honestly telling you that, as I was with your performance. It was fantastic. Can you tell our audience what it was just... I know you can't go in, there's a lot of emotion here, but can you kind of tell us what that was about, like what it was like? Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of emotion going into this year's World Series. And, you know, first it was my senior year, our last year. And second, after what had happened the previous year, we had lost in the championship in a heartbreaker. And third, we, we were kind of playing for the state of Oklahoma. The tragedy had hit with the tornado in May. And, you know, it just it struck our team and we just kind of looked at softball in a different way. And we were trying to use that stage that we had with the World Series and just try to bring hope to the state and try to try to bring some joy to the people. And, you know, it it gives me chills talking about it right now. But it's it was just really cool to be able to come together with not only our team, but the university and the state of Oklahoma to just try to bring happiness to our people. And it was fun to be able to play for them. You know, and, and while you were there, you had. Uh, a team from the uh, tornado area that had uh, one of the players uh, killed there mm -hmm. and you had uh, a lot of stuff there to represent the tornado and what had happened to the people of Oklahoma and I thought that was was really neat the way y'all did that and brought them on the team. I even saw the mayor was there. I mean <laughs> everybody was there. Everybody yeah. was excited about it. Yeah it was cool and especially with that team there um, you know it made us look at softball a different way. The One of their, their pitcher she actually had passed away in the tornado and, you know, it was funny because she had been a big OU fan. She came to our, my USA games and came to our OU games. And it, was, it just made us, we, we got to play with them in our Super Regional game the, night, the day before our Super Regional game, just to play on the field with them and have fun with them. And just made us realize how fun the, the game really is. And it definitely put the game in a different perspective. You know, we're not just out there trying to press, press for a championship. We're out there having fun with our friends. So it was cool because we were trying to inspire them and they inspired us as well. Yeah, and it, was, and it was a great, this great event all the way around. You know, my daughter went to OU, so I was boomer sooner. And, you know, <laughs> awesome. I feel like I paid so much money there, I can claim that, right? Awesome. Yep, but, you can. <laughs> but I want to go back a little bit earlier in your career. Like, how old were you? Let's go way back. How old were you when you started playing softball? I played t-ball in kindergarten, so I just started from there. And my two older sisters, they played softball as well, so I was always dragged to their game. So softball's just always been around my whole life. So you've been playing softball since you can remember. Yep, I guess so. I was playing softball, I swam, played basketball, played so a lot. Who was your first coach? My mom was my manager. I'm, I guess that. Okay, that's good <laughs> enough. I, I run into more dads than I do moms. That's why I asked that question. I've run yeah. into you, Monica Abbott, says her mom. You know, several times I hear that mom, but not, not that often. And so when you start playing, were you playing just, uh, when did you start playing competitive softball, I guess is what I'm trying to find out. Um, when I was about nine or ten, my older sister, she was playing travel ball for San Jose State, and so then I ended up getting into that organization as well. And I played that all growing up through travel ball, and then I ended up on the Sorcerer in my last year. And when did you start pitching at that age? Um, you know, I was too scared to pitch, actually. My parents kept trying to get me to try out, but I was too afraid to try out for the teams. But then they, I, I, I probably about 11, I guess, yeah. 
Now, if I remember correctly from the last time I interviewed you, and I'm not sure I'm correct on this, but you told me that once you started seriously pitching, you threw about 150 balls a day until you got to college. Is that right? In practice? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was just out there playing, having fun, didn't really take it that seriously, I guess. And then, you know, coaches, they just kept telling me, like, you know, you could be really good if you really put the work in and stuff. And you know, I, I kind of thought about it, and I was like, well, might as well try it. And so... When I was about 15 or 16, I just I went out and I would throw about 50 of each pitch every day, and I just I just had the mentality I just wanted to be the best out there, and I just wanted to work harder than anyone else, and you know that's when I really started to have confidence in myself because I was practicing so much, and you know my stuff was really moving out there, and it was it was really fun to be able to see my to see what I was capable of doing, and you know and that was from about junior and senior year, little sophomore year of high school, I I started. I just became a completely different player because I was able to really just enhance my game by practicing so much. So, so okay, so we understand how your pitching got so great, and you did make it to the top of the game there, we can certainly say. But the other part, I mean, the way you hit, I mean, you're not just like you get on base. I mean, what are you batting number four? I mean, you know, you are a, you are a powerhouse hitter. I mean, you know, you got the winning uh, RBIs in your own in the championship game. I mean, you know, and when did you start hitting like that? Or how did did, and some, did you have someone working with you? And uh, did you have to practice a lot? Tell us a little bit about your development in hitting. Um, I never really had, you know, I had a pitching coach growing up. I go to every week, but I didn't have a hitting coach. I guess you know, I'd I'd go to different hitting coaches every now and then, but I just I wasn't. I guess since I wasn't really the number one pitcher on my teams I was always like an out left fielder or first baseman and stuff so I was always a hitter growing up and you know then it just became a hitter pitcher and you know coach Castro she told me that she really wanted me to hit while I was in college and you know, I was excited about that well that was a good call I'd have to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah and she got she let me have a few steals I mean I wish I had a few more but I'm glad she let me steal <laughs> now, what was it like coat playing for Patty it was it was awesome it was incredible and you know, it's not just that she was an amazing coach, but she was also, she cared about us off the field as well. And, you know, I, I could call her my mom. I kind of tease her that way, but she really did, did treat us like her children. And, you know, I'm still able to have a good relationship with her, even though I'm out of college. But, you know, she just genuinely cared about her players as people and not just, she didn't, she didn't have her favorite. She really just cared about all of the players. And it was cool to be able to see that kind of relationship with her. Well, I have a feeling you'll probably have a relationship knowing her with the rest of her life with, <laughs> with her. Now, I, now, Patty is real strong in her faith. Mm -hmm. And I noticed uh, I had not been to a lot of the games in person, but after the game, game was over, you actually huddled down. You, someone led you in a prayer on the field there. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting and pretty pretty great to see that on the field. Did you all do that after every game? Or was that a special? Or I'm just curious. That's the question I want to know. Um, when was, was that after the championship yeah, game? Yeah, after the championship game. You had some dynamic prayer leader there. Yeah, that was our chaplain, Sarah Roberts. Uh, yeah, we usually, we always pray as a team before every game. And then actually the year before when we had lost to uh, Alabama in the championship, she came down and, you know, we were devastated. And she came down and we just had a prayer together and we were praying and just saying that, you know, whether we win or lose, we always praise God. And that was just kind of our thing that just held us together and just know that even though we lost, it wasn't the end of the world. And then after we were able to win the national championship, she still came down because whether we win or lose, we still were able to praise God. Great. And speaking of last year, getting back to that, man, I, I was there for that too. And that rain started coming down and I told a guy beside me, this is never good to see rain in a game. Anything can happen. He said, what do you mean? <laughs> he did not know ball very well, I guess, as he used to say. Now, now, we're here in Florida for the USSA Pride, or USSA National mm -hmm. Convention. This is your first trip here, I assume. What is it like coming to this and uh, seeing it, uh, this part of uh, softball? It's really cool just to see how many people are involved in USSA. You know, I never really knew about it before, but just to see how, how it's so strong in different sports, not just softball. And, how many people are just so dedicated to making our sport better for the different, like the girls involved and the, the older players that are involved as well. So it's cool to be able to represent USSA on the pride and to be able to make our sport stronger. So what was it like, since we're on that subject and I brought it up, what was it like uh, your first year on the pride winning the national championship? That's kind of like, how many people won two championships in one year, huh? <laughs> that's, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, well, I joined the team halfway through, so I wasn't there the, the whole season. But, you know, it was, it was definitely hard getting used to it and, and digesting from college ball to pro ball. But, you know, the girls, they're just they're, – they're very knowledgeable. They're some of the best in the game, and they're very approachable as well. So they were able to help me, and they really helped me get through the thick and thin. And, and I was able to help them with the championship, and we, 
we were able to win the championship at the end of the summer. So, you know, it was cool to be able to start the summer with the national championship and then end one with the pro championship, I guess. But Yeah, not many people have two of those in a year, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun to be able to just experience it with some of the great college players and some of the great pro players. So it was, it was cool to have that moment. You know, that could be a trivia question. What softball players won two national championships in one year? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so now, um, speaking on that, something else about you that's new. You uh, are now a Worth player. And I saw the other day a picture of the Kehlani Ricketts bat. So, oh, really? Yeah, I've you haven't seen, seen that? that? No, I've been in Japan, so I haven't seen that. <laughs> okay, well, you have a bat now, so yeah. that was kind of cool, I thought. Is there anything uh, for our uh, future players coming up that they're inspiring to, you know, make it like you are? There's so many girls uh, trying to get to the level you are, and you know that's a pyramid. How wide that pyramid is at the bottom, but to get where you were at is very, very few that make it. Is there anything that you can tell them to inspire them and help them out on their goal of reaching that? Um, you know, there's just there's a lot of different things just to work to where to just to be the best. You know, you have to practice, have the mentality of. You want to be the best out there, you have to practice harder and more than anyone else out there. And, you know, you have to love what you're doing. You can't be out there working hard and having no purpose if you don't love the game. And when it comes down to school as well, you know, if you, if you want to be a, a student athlete in college, you, you don't have to work not only hard on the field, but you have to work hard in the classroom because, you know, the college coaches are giving you a scholarship to go to school as well. It's not just to be an athlete. So, you know, you have to re really work hard in the classroom as well. It's not just going to be handed to you. That's good advice because that's score. Those, those grades are very important to get where you're going to be. Matter of fact, I remember one time I was interviewing Jessica Mendoza and she goes, you don't have the grades. You can't even go play softball yeah, at a lot of school. Exactly. You know, and a lot of kids, I don't think, realize that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can't even play there if they don't have the grades. Yeah. You know, like a lot of times you, we get, we feel so much pressure from trying to do so good in softball and getting recruited, but we don't realize, oh, you know, you, you're getting recruited as a student as well. You're getting recruited to get a scholarship to pay for your school. So it's, you know, it's just that balance of being able to work hard in the classroom as well as on the field. How about for, uh, could you give a tip, do you have any tip you might be able to give for coaches out there of travel ball players? Maybe something you've learned from your life of being a player and coach? Because obviously you were coached kind of well, or you wouldn't have developed and still have a love for the game. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I'm asking you off the spur of the moment there, yeah. so uh, <laughs> so you don't have an answer that's understandable. I just, we, we didn't rehearse these questions. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, I've kind of been hearing a little bit of controversy, not only with travel softball, but also with with AAU basketball. And, you know, coaches are starting, college coaches are starting to see kids aren't really developing. Uh, they're, they're, comp they're competing so much, you know, and getting seen is really important. And so we're, we're really trying to showcase our kids, but then also just developing the fundamental part of the game and, you know, maybe just trying to work so hard on the little things. And that really is going to, that's going to get showcased in the showcases, but just really focus on defense and those little mechanics. You know, when I was growing up on my travel team, I used to we, I used to play outfield and play infield. I'd play all the positions. They, they'd have all the girls playing all the positions just so we could just develop different parts of the game. And at OU, I actually played a few games in the outfield, so I think that might have helped. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, you said earlier when you were growing up you played softball and basketball and several sports. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for instance, uh, Joan Joyce, one of the greatest players of all time, yeah. told me that was probably the most important thing that's not being done is these yeah. kids are playing one sport. Yeah. In basketball, you're learning things you need for softball mm -hmm. and that you need to play all these sports. So you, since you did that too, do you agree with that? We shouldn't be just playing softball year round. You need to play more than one sport. For sure. I, I love playing basketball and softball all my life. And, you know, playing basketball, I was able to become, I was able to stay in condition. I was able to become more agile and quick with my feet. And that definitely helped with pitching and playing softball. So, and I, I think with, Recruiting becoming so so earlier, and girls are being recruited in seventh, eighth grade. You know, it's become more of a priority just to stay with one sport. But it's a shame because girls should be able to experience having teammates with with not only basketball team and softball team, but be able to just enhance their athleticism, not just in one sport. Yeah, well, I want to tell you, thank you for taking the time for this interview. It's been more than a pleasure talking with you. You just you just send out the message of happiness that you can tell how happy you are with your life right now. And that's always a pleasure to see. So thanks for taking the time with me. No problem. Thanks for having me. Okay. Looking for a softball bat? Do you want to say $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount on all regular price bats on the website. That's right. $30 discount. Just text the word fast pitch to 555-888 and Gary will send you a discount code good for $30 off your next softball bet at softballjunk.com. 
FYI, that code's also good at the Arlington, Texas store. Welcome back. Now that last short clip, that was my daughter Amanda telling you about my website, softballjunk.com. Make sure you text the word fast pitch to 555-888 and get your discount code for $30 off your next softball bat. And you can use that code over and over at checkout. Save yourself $30. It's really great. It's a great deal. You just need to text fast pitch to 555-888 and I'll send you the discount code. Now if you enjoy the show, I ask you at least check out my website, softballjunk.com, the next time you're looking for softball equipment. If I offer a competitive price, well, please buy from me and show your support for what I'm doing here for all the free content I bring you every month. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Please tell your friends about the Fast Pitch TV website and make sure and take a look at the Fast Pitch TV website at www.fastpitch.tv. So until next time, this is Gary Leland saying goodbye and thanks for watching. <laughs>